close your eyes and watch your breath. The intention to stay with the breath is good food for the mind. All in all, the Buddha says there are three kinds of food for the mind. There's contact at the senses, and there's consciousness at the senses, and then there are your intentions. Now, the things that make contact at the senses, you don't have much control over those. Well, they do have control over which things you're going to focus on, which things you're not. And that has to do with your intentions. And this is where you should have full control. And this is our problem, is that we don't have much control over our diet here. Or we don't exercise control. We just take whatever comes up. And so when we meditate, we're learning how not to just go with the flow. You've got one good intention, you hold it in mind. And you stick with it. Again and again and again. Each time the breath comes in, each time the breath goes out, you're going to stay right here. You try to make the breath comfortable so that it's not just an exercise in willpower. You're learning how to enjoy being here in the present moment, too. That's part of what makes this good food for the mind. Because if the mind doesn't get any sense of enjoyment out of what's skillful, it's going to go look for unskillful things to feed on. And then when it's Suffering, it complains. It's like someone who doesn't take good care of his or her diet and then complains that there's something wrong with my stomach. Well, the, the food you've been putting in has been causing a problem. So look at how you feed your mind. What intentions do you run with? Which intentions do you put aside? Do you have a clear idea of what standards you should use, or do you just go with whatever comes up? The Buddha is saying that you can really benefit by being more systematic, being more deliberate in what you feed on. Make sure you supply yourself with a good diet. And it's totally free. Your breath comes in, breath goes out. One of the few things they haven't privatized yet. It's your breath. You can breathe any way you want. You can breathe long or short, fast or slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow. In other words, you get to fix your food as you like, in line with your tastes. The important thing is you stick with this intention to stay with the breath and not go wandering off into other areas. And that you find some enjoyment in being here. That way when the mind is well fed, the strengths it needs to practice even further get supported. Strength of conviction that yes, your actions really do matter. Persistence. Once you've decided something really is good, you stick with it. Something is bad, something is unskillful, you are clear about letting it go. Strength of mindfulness. When you keep something in mind. In this case, keep in mind the fact that you're feeding the mind all the time, so you should feed it well. And this leads to the strength of concentration, where the mind finally settles down and feels at home right here. And then there's the discernment that comes as you learn how to observe your own mind. See where you're creating unnecessary stress, unnecessary suffering, and learn how to stop. All of this comes from learning how to feed the mind well. And this is the basic food in the diet. Getting the mind to be with the breath. Breathe in a way that feels good all the way down inside to the body. Feels nourishing to the heart. And just keep feeding the mind this way as much as you can. Because unlike the food for the body, the more you feed on this kind of food, the better it gets. With food for the body, even the best food, you have to stop after a while, give the body a rest. But this you can feed on all day long. So when the mind has no other responsibilities it has to care for them, make the breath its default place, its default spot the food that it always comes back to.